Yeah. 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 Yeah.
still has to be done with permits. And there's another other, other science too that has nothing to do with ours. Mother's Golf Course and all of them are put up illegally. They want their permits pulled out of the county. So they better. They can find out to be done through KLH and get the permits that they want that. Time to get a shutdown one through another so we can make one through. So I try to accept too. 
least up to the Department of Government in Algeria to shut down the other club. So we had that discussion. It wasn't about the equipment that you needed. It's about the manpower to run the equipment. Yeah, more about, yeah, about, about, okay. Well, I have a couple things, if you don't. Yeah, yeah no, no. Um, So, like we've heard, and it's all these playgrounds, you know, he's going to spend eight grand to run the equipment, 14 to have them installed, and then, um, you know, say it's done a couple of weeks. How many, how long does it take to put this up? How many weeks? For you, for you, yeah. Uh, it depends on whether it's a little more or not. Yeah, so a month or so, which, which is, which is a better event? 13 yeah. days, you're paying for it. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm not a writer, I have the numbers. No, I'm not going to talk about them. Does anyone have any opposition that hasn't been? No, I think it's better. Okay, go ahead and do it. It's part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll make a motion. Yeah, we buy it. We don't want to do it without a motion.
auto response saying, I'm off the attorney leave. So we kind of scrambled over the next day or so, got in touch with another person there um, who said that they were now handling the project and that they would, she would check on the status, get us an update, and make sure that it was, it was completed. Um, I sent an email out today and said, look, I have a meeting tonight. I still haven't heard anything, sort of what is going on. Um, the property manager said that he had also sent the same, another email asking for an update and got an auto response from the new person that they're out until April 22nd on business. Um, he had requested that um, we wait until, you know, if we could withhold everything until April 22nd, he was gonna request an in-person meeting and drive to their office and, and he said, uh, he thought being there in person himself, he could, he could finally get an answer and get this project done. Um, and I told him I didn't know if that was possible or not. So I kind of wanted to, to leave it up to the board at this point. I mean, we could do one of two things. Either we can wait until our next meeting on May the 6th. I mean, I could talk to the property manager and say, look, if your in-person meeting doesn't do anything and there's not dirt being moved, you know, before May the 6th, then you know, we're moving forward. Or I can just, you know, go ahead and start moving forward now. It's, it's really up to the board. This has been going on for so long. So long. Yeah, at he, least two years, maybe more. Yeah, I don't. I mean, my involvement doesn't go back quite that far, but um, but uh, in January is when the site that, that's when the daily citation started, and I was told at that time that due to weather, and that was the weather was the main problem. They they had committed to doing the project, they were going to bid the project, and it was just a weather issue. They couldn't get out there to do the project until the weather cleared up, which is what brought me to Mark when the weather kind of cleared up, and I said, "What's going on?" They said, "Hey, we have a bid. You know, we're going to do. We received right. one bid." And I kind of gave a little bit of leeway until the beginning, the beginning of this month. And again, it's just, I, it's, it doesn't have enough traction. I understand now they're, they're passing it from one person who's on maternity leave to another person. That may be a little bit of it. But, and, and, and the property manager has agreed in writing to me that this timeline is unacceptable. He doesn't know why it's taken this long. They've never had this much problems with Dollar General. They're usually very responsive. So he kind of acknowledges and says, hey, you guys have been more than patient. I understand it. Give me more time. I can work this out. So I don't, I don't blame property manager as much as I blame the developer, the developer general in general. They're, they're just not being uh, responsive enough, I think, for either one of us. Um, so I don't, you know, again. Well, I've got a question on that. So daily citation, what's the number? And second, time are they paying it? 500 a day. They it? The citations got put on hold whenever they contact, John Boots contacted me and said he wasn't aware of the issue and he was going to make sure that that wall got built. And so we had agreed to sort of stay everything. So they're just pending. They're, they're on hold right now. And, you know, they can be started back up at any time. But, you know, uh, again, I was trying to, the easiest route is never litigation. It's if somebody's going to step in and say, hey, we're going to build this wall, rather than go through a court process, which is lengthy, get an order actually directing them to do it, and then forcing them to comply with that order. It's much easier if the person says, yeah, you're right, there's an issue, I'm going to do it. And so we had somebody doing that, and I was trusting, he's, you know, they said, like, due to the weather, we did this thing out. It, it was moving, and then it just sort of stalled a little bit here. Um, Can you tell them they're going to reinstate the citation sure. and then threaten them with the retroactive situation if they don't get this ball rolling by yeah. May 6th? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, they don't, if they don't at least start on it by May 6th, I say pull the permit. Yeah, I don't pull it out of the Yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with all. Yeah, that was kind of my gut. Is I, and I told Mr. Carter, unfortunately, like, even if he's even if he's directing me tonight to start the litigation, that April 22nd deadline he wants is going to come and go anyway. We're not going to be. We're going to complete it by the time I draft the complaint. So, so. Don't forget them. I have a couple of clients that have it. They're, they're privately owned. Yeah. Would that go to the owner that built the wall, or the, would that go to the Dollar General? It's people within Dollar General that are handling this, that have committed to doing it and have bid the project. So I have a, I have a project, I have a property manager who is uh, based out of, I don't know, he's a 931 area code. I don't know where that's based out of. He's based somewhere, and then Dollar General was based out of somewhere else. So I don't know one thing: we pull their occupancy permit, that wall will be up tomorrow. Matt, I don't know if this helps, but the, the bidder, the contractor, has reached out to us, oh, okay. wanting to know. I think there was a little misunderstanding communication from Dollar General. He had reached out to us, wanting us, what, asking me what the township wanted him to build. I said, No, that's that's up to Dollar General who's paying you. The township has to agree and approve everything. What you need to do is get the final of what they're going to say do, submit the plans for us for review and approval, and then you can go. And that was about two weeks ago. Okay. My last communication was today. So, um, well, this was the, the, the contractor. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get that information from Don, follow up with them.
We were told by Whitley and Whitley to make them in here, they wanted to be good neighbors. We have a problem. The township has a number, all we got to do is call it, they'll take care of it and fix it. Well, back on the 30th of March, I called the DEP because it was a slop that was all over the road out on Fallen Timber. The DEP inspector called me back the following day. To let me know that he'd given me three citations that day because he'd been out three weeks prior and noted the problem was there, told him to fix it. Three weeks later, they hadn't fixed it yet. <coughs> this past weekend, two weeks after this, I happened to be out there again on Friday when I went out to the dust four tenths of a mile up the hill from their entryway. It rained. When I come back on, the mud's running down the road into the fall. I went out the following day. There's mud track up the hill. Took pictures of it, sent it to the DEP. Inspector called me again today. He was out again today and signed it. Why should we call these people and tell them there's a problem and ask them to fix it? If they can't even fix it when the DEP cites them for it. Sometimes it takes them a while. I, I get you why I call DP. I do understand that. But I think call them both. Uh, rest for a minute. <laughs> no, that's another point. You could also call the township and then we would call X. Well, who, who do we call? We've been asking that for months. All right. We have an inspector who's supposed to be checking this kind of thing. You know, we can cite, we can cite handicapped women because their grass is too tall. But we can't cite these people whenever they've got mud all over the road. Done with the least disruption. 
to the residents and to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy McCall. Super brief. I think um, based on comment that was just made by Fred, I, I appreciate that. I'm not sure where that was because I didn't see it, so I don't. <laughs> I missed it, but I guess I would agree with you guys and just ask everybody if we can be good neighbors first, and maybe we'll have, I'm serious, it's funny, like, but if my, if something happened on my property, I would really love for somebody to come and ask me to take care of it at first. Right, you know I love you, I'm not, gonna, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying like it would save money if Huntley did have a chance to come out and do something about it, so. Anything that happens our way, I'd love to hear about it too. And I'll be involved if you guys don't want to, because we want to give, we want to keep the good neighbor thing going. We've got a long way, a long road to hoe here, and I think it would be helpful if we can just try to you know, be, be kind and, and expect good in return. And if not, then call people. Thank you. Uh, Ted Gray. If you did pass this conditional use, you should come up with conditions on this and not pass it without conditions. To do that, you should thoroughly and thoughtfully consider it. You shouldn't make a decision on this tonight without making sure it stays in the township to consider other conditions. You should instead table this. The facility should not be there for 15 years and then another 15 more. It should be temporary. It should be written as such. Have they even gotten water lines from PA American? I doubt it because they say how they only want to use this water from the yard. Is the lease really a thousand dollars a month for 12 months and does that payment end but they are able to pump the water out of Elizabeth Township and have no payments coming to us whatsoever? If that's the case, that's very sad. But really, you should pass CEDO and deny the water intake. The yacht can't take this withdrawal at this location. They can pump PA American water into CEDO pad and when uh, none is going into the CEDO pad by their own words tonight. I have no idea how much time I have. There is sulfur in that water. When I got out of it, it just sticks with you and it smells really, really bad. So the reality is the condition used for the pump station should be denied because the yacht can't sustain this. The area of the pump house is on recreational use land. The structure is not temporary. The use of the water is for outside of Elizabeth Township in addition to Elizabeth Township. There is salt for that water. There is other issues with that water. There are buoys all over the water. But the final thing I have to say is that <coughs> the signs for candidates should read industry over community. That's what your new water should be. If you do not consider community concerns and instead continuously approve things open-ended without any constraints or any conditions. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to move on to item for discussion on all the citizens signed up to speak. existing drainage culvert to be redirected is in fact an existing strain and therefore the permitting may be very extensive. I did uh, if I could uh, talk to Brian just a little bit. I don't know the extent of the project or what you know, but he did tell me that DEP has determined that it would require a joint DEP and federal um, section 404 permitting, which is uh, excuse me, I can't hear you. Could you speak for the effects being all about the determined that they, the project would require a section 404 um, to federal permit to be a joint permit with the ADDP. Um, that's the case that I have. Thank you. Uh, there's a couple other things I want to discuss. Um, I know it's on the agenda, but uh, the first is that we've been working uh, constantly on getting a comprehensive plan to develop for Elizabeth Township. Um, 
we haven't put out any uh, requests for proposals yet. However, Joel has to get, uh, I don't know how many samples from other municipalities, I think six or seven or eight. Peters Township, Upper St. Clair, Finley Township, other uh, Cranberry, you know, other places like that. And we did advertise for a comprehensive planning committee. And tonight I'm going to appoint the members to that board and um, instruct that committee to decide which RFP they'd like to use, how to tweak it. Uh, but from the letters of interest, I'm going to pick the following uh, candidates to be appointed to the committee. Uh, the first one. I'm going to from that list. I understand you. Why not put everyone on it? Well, why should we have a choice of who to pick? Is it a democracy or what? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. any, any committee is assigned by the, uh, the president of the country. So, so he can do when that. When did that start? I've been here for 40 years and we've never done it. It's always been done that way. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. I mean, any word that I represent, yeah. it's done that way. Absolutely. So, point of clarification. So, this committee is being put together to then select a company to do the comprehensive plan. Yes, we'll have to go before the board. I recommend the Township Commissioner will ultimately do the actual. Okay, so I'll now make the appointment. Uh, the first person I'm going to put on is uh, Bobby Bernadowski. Second, Kathy Fawson. Third, Ted Grice. Fourth, Russ Romanek. Fifth, Cindy Ramoswamy. Sixth, uh, Kristen Ash. Stephanie Swift. Norman Candelore. <coughs> Dennis McAndrew. And I'm going to appoint Commissioner Walk to be the chairman of that committee. And I'm going to let you oversee the entire comprehensive planning process. You're, that's going to be your thing. Ouch. No, sorry. <laughs> but we have. Uh, between six, seven, and eight RFPs from, from other municipalities. And uh, you could coordinate with that committee to pick out which RFP you'd like to use and move on from what type of development you'd like to see in the township, whether it be recreation, business, housing, whatever you want to work on. So that's, this, this whole thing is in your hands. Okay. okay. Real quick one. What was the candle or you said? Norm. Norm? Is he a resident in Elizabeth Township? He's a business owner in Elizabeth Township. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. The second thing I want to talk about besides the comprehensive plan is uh, this is something that came in today. It's a little bit of communication and correspondence with Energy. Um, after doing some research, uh, I, I found the host agreement for Janaska in Westmoreland County. And I know that a lot of people squawked and said that Energy's contributions to our fire halls aren't adequate for what they deserve. Janaska <coughs> gave their they, they get one fire hall in Westmoreland County, $5,000. And energy is giving each of our fire departments $100,000. So compared to $5,000, we're getting $400,000. And we have $40,000 sitting up here that came in as a down payment today. Uh, $10,000 each fire hall is a down payment on the $400,000 that they will get. So I'll distribute that uh, at the end of the meeting. We don't even have a post agreement yet. We have $40,000 sitting here. So I will move on to items for consideration. I have the check right here. No, I mean the total commitment. It shall be finalized by the end of the week. Okay. By, by cashing those checks, is that a commitment to these people? I think you might want to hold on to those or put that in escrow. Our, our name is on. It, it's a payment received by you. What's that? It's a payment received by this board. It doesn't have our name on it. They're made out directly to Blaine Hill, Unit Vesta, and so on. Um, so I'm going to move on to items for consideration. Uh, motion to approve the Commissioner's meeting minutes dated uh, April 3rd, 2019, and March 18th, 2019. So moved. I'll second. Question on the motion. Uh, roll call. Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Beckwith? Yes. Commissioner Lake? Yes. Commissioner Evans? Yes. President Kesner? Yes. Motion to approve the sanitary fund bill warranted April 15, 2019, about $172,174.71. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Commissioner Seminole? Yes. Commissioner Walk? Yes. Commissioner Beckwith? Yes. Commissioner Lake? Yes. Commissioner Evans? Yes. President Kesner? Yes. Motion to approve the general fund bill warranted April 15, 2019, and amount of 
Yes. Yeah. Motion to approve sanitary and water requisition number 66 and not $2,224. So moved. Second. Motion on motion. Roll call. Sanitary one for the position. to obtain geotechnical services to perform an initial review of Jacktown Road and provide investigative and or remediation recommendations. So moved. Second. Question on the motion. Roll call. Commissioner Simmel? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Beckwith? Yes. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Evans? Yes. Yes. Motion to ratify approval of advertising for a special meeting held April 3rd, 2019 at 6 p.m. to approve the financing, the refinancing of the Senate Series 1. Like 
to say that I'm not really happy with the idea of this being here. maybe 15 to 30 years. Just, I mean, just for point of clarification, yes, yeah, so this is on the above ground pen. Yes. Right, the next one is on the pump station, just for point of clarification. There's another, the, the second motion would be for the NPA, so just so you know, I mean, that's right. just point of clarification. It'll be there for as long as operations, I don't know if that, it'll be there beyond that, but. Yeah. Approved slash deny the judicial use application submitted by HEX for the Gaming Freshwater Intake Facility in Marlowe. So moved. I'll second. Special motion. Oh, I didn't know what. You might have done. You might have amended the motion uh, to include a condition for the township approval of the uh, material buffering and cop. That's fine.
do and KLA yeah. has you know, and make sure that it's within the yeah, five. We haven't decided on the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's all good. So I'm in the night and I'm second. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Separately for all AC matters, subject to be reimbursed by AEC. Um, something I just want to talk about before we go on this. Um, one other thing I want to address we hired Mark Center here to draft the post agreement between Nina Energy and Elizabeth Township. And in those post agreements, which we don't include reimbursements for any legal costs, that includes Mark Center Shapiro. So it's not just um, fees from anxieties or matters or whatever. But Mark Center Shapiro, everything that we pay them will be reimbursed for. I'll make a motion. Second. Question. What type of uh, what type of invoicing will that this company do to this firm do what they do? This is a zoning solicitor. Yeah. So anything that there's anything that involves AEC that, that is outside of this nine hundred dollars a month scope. All we're doing here is pressing the money. No, yeah. you know, well I don't even try it. We I think we need so the bills get the bills get approved and then they get they submit it, I think. So we don't expend it until it comes oh, in. Okay. So there's no, yeah, we're not front end. Kind of <laughs> but Mark's interest, but uh, better just going to pay for Mark's interest here. Yeah. Okay. Five minute motion. Roll uh, call. Commissioner Simlow? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Redwood? Yes. Commissioner Blake? Yes. Commissioner Evans? Yes. Yes. Now we're going to move to uh, citizens that want to address on agenda. First is going to be Larry Kosha. A couple of quick questions. I wish you guys luck with your project. I'm glad to hear you size your horsepower. 350 variable speed motors. Mine was a lot less. So that should go forward. The next thing I want to know is the permit that's affecting uh, Mansfield District. Could you explain what you're doing down there? Is it on hold or is it moving forward? Uh, Ryan's indicated that their violation Okay, and I know that no sewage was considered down there, even though it's been considered for 50 years, but if it doesn't be tied to Mansfield, I don't know where you're going with your project. I'd like to see the plans. I'm requesting from the president that I see what KLH is doing. We will turn it right until we get to you. Thank you. Next thing I have, since my experience with right away and right 48, item 15 that you're discussing, you're giving, explain that to me, I have trouble with procedures. Yeah, so, they, so they there, took, yeah, what happened is there was a, there was like a development somewhere over there and they had actually put um, like roads and right-of-ways in that they were supposed to be, they were dedicated to the township, but the township never actually like accepted them. So in order to clarify the fact that they have the, the legal ability to work in that area, they need us um, by ordinance to formally accept uh, those areas. So that's what this is. It's really like a housekeeping matter to make sure that PennDOT has the legal right to do that work on that slide area. When do you get involved with eminent domain like happened with me? If they need the property, there's is no it your property? No, there's no need for eminent domain no. because it's already been dedicated. So the, the dedication's already out there. So it's already been turned over to the township. There's just no formal document on file that says we actually accepted it. So there's again, I think I see. it's even simpler language. The right. right away always existed. Yeah. But for some reason, the township had the right away to a state road. It's clarifying. It's clarifying the legal rights that PennDOT has the right to, the legal right to go in there and do that work. That's all it is. Like I said, it's more of a housekeeping matter. I mean, we're not taking any problem. It's, it's always been there. It's just clarifying their legal right to go in there and do the work. Did you have to have one done on my property for them to take what they did? I, well, I, don't, I don't know what was done on the property side. So well, I'll come and explain it to you. Or, but, but anyway, from the standpoint, it's just clarification of what they're going to do. There's already an existing right away. Yeah. It normally, whoever owns the road has the right way. For some reason, years and years and years ago, when they did it, instead of putting PennDOT down, they put Elizabeth down. All right, not to take up more time, what is the, what is the dimension of the right of way that they have? That road is so wide, how much they're going to stay on their they're six? Staying within their right way. Okay, we'll go from there. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Larry. Yep. And John? Give me a little bit of history, guys. I've been a 
Township all my life. I've been five years. Back here about 20, 20 some years ago, got a big problem over at dentistry. We had a sore problem over there, whereas we, we had to put liners in the sore pipe. When they put them liners in the sore pipe, they began to open the pipe coming from Larry Brown's house up on, up on the top of the hill for me. Now what the hell happened there? My yard got flooded with raw sewage. I had to go to the doctor because my freaking legs got infected. This sewage was terrible. Township came out there, took it in, they came out and took a sample of it, found out it was raw sewage. They run a they ran a camera up to up to the uh, up the shore pipe and they found out that it wasn't they were not tapped in. They took care of their problem. After they took care of the problem, Mickey Ensper came down there, came in, and Mickey Ensper did one heck of a good job resolving the problem, putting new seed down, putting shrubs in, and everything else on my property. He did a great job. Now, after that fact, we got another problem. We got the people from the top of a hill up there sending all their water <coughs> down the way. And what a heck of a mess that is. And I've been putting up with this crap for too damn many years, period. And what caused that water to come down over the hill is whenever we checked the down spots and found out that the people up on their sky view had their roll of their water went into the sewer system. So what they did, they took the water out of the sewer system and put it in our yard. That was real nice of them. My house is sunk. The rain sharp, sharp yard wall is falling down. People next to me in the black and gold. This problem is continues every spring and time it rains. My yard is like a swamp, period. Now we had contractors come in here and do a job. I did a bunch of grade school people do the job they did. The work that they did in my yard is totally, totally unacceptable. And I used to have a beautiful yard. Now it's like crap. And I told them here, why don't you take the intro back in? Who picks the way it's supposed to be? Oh, this other contractor who worked in my yard, Brian Gosham, they didn't do the job they should do. They were here, they're gone, they're here, they're gone. I'm tired of hearing wrong crap. No, they also have, we have five or six Cheyenne red dogwood trees planted. I wish you guys could come over and take a look at them through the dogwood trees, how they planted. The ball is sitting right up on top of my ground.
So I hope you guys take care of it for me. I appreciate it, you boys. It's only been going on for about three years. I know. Trust I had to write two pair of shoes come every real look at them. I know. Might be shit down the damn in the damn water mud. Crap. I saw a fish jump in one day. <laughs> <laughs> This is like my neighbors across from my house. They've all approached me with the same situation. Skyview is actually dumping the water on. Uh, I got one, two, three, four, five, five neighbors on the side of Howe that are complaining and wanting French trains. And one actually has bought dams to dam up to try and divert the water. So it's all, it, it is all coming off. And it's causing a big problem up there. My house is sunk a half an inch. Believe me, come here and check it. So uh, again, I, I feel the plight here. What is, what's the uh, what's the code situation on water coming from another person's property, John? You can't uh, direct your storm water onto a neighboring property, right? But this issue, the township took uh, took charge to try and uh, remedy the situation. So that was because many many years ago they just dropped it right into the sanitary from the downspouts and then so as, as i've been told yes this is yes. sorry we to change the sanitary source yes yeah it was about halfway down <clears throat> yeah. 
So I also remember in the back of my brain that there was some, some uh, pipe work done up there. Was there not? Yeah, yeah. There's, you there's, there's five or six houses up on the Kaju that are sending their water down on our street. They're not tapped into nothing. And I told them, I gave them suggestions for them. I said, what they can do is run a catch basin up on Skyview, someplace up there, run all them down spots in the catch basin, run that pipe then down to my catch basin in my yard, then go down to Dennis Street there. That would be the cheapest way to do it. Because, see, guys, your stuff, estimate is there a right way to do that up there? Well, there's a right of way back. That's how they, that's how they put my pipe in my, them pipes in my yard. Now, there's a right way, I think, about halfway up. Right? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. But you know what the sad part about on uh, Skyview, there's no catch basins on Skyview. Period. Nothing. All the water goes. That was a developer that yeah. many years ago that got away with right, it. Right, right. Right, but see the whole problem. Well, on your property, is there are there other folks that have, I mean, you've, you've obviously been very vocal. The about house other people that are getting buried here too. The house next to me, Debbie's house, has got black mold in it, and Tom Sharkey's house on the right side of mine, his walls going down, and whenever the water comes down from the Skyview area, they put these freaking swells in there that are useless. The water overflows the swells, which you don't believe me, because I'm just a dummy. It, it overflows the swell, goes over four loads this yard, who lives, she's a retired, she lives in Florida now. Goes into your yard, goes across loads this yard, goes Tom Sharkey's yard in my yard. In my yard, I can put fish in my yard, that's so bad as it. Or, you know, we've, we've been talking about these projects, Mansfield, uh, Rockland, obviously this one's been a problem for a while. What can we do there? How can we, how can we help this? Yeah, but you're going to sit down with Scale Lake, Jason. That's number one on the list. I'm not, nothing against Scale Lake. It's just we need that serious sit down to figure out what's going on. It's not just this issue. There's like 10 other engineering projects that we need to be working on. We sort of let them slip through the cracks, and it's really unacceptable. So that's all we need to do. Like, Andrew, you asked me my address. You can, you can come in my yard anytime you want. Okay. Um, you want to share? The inspector's been there. He knows. You can definitely see the pipe aimed right into my yard. It is like 10 feet from my property, and she's averted every inch of water from the back of her roof. I mean, it's a hip roof. Everything comes down to that corner. It's the lowest corner of the house. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I understand how much money it's going to cost to fix this, but my neighbor at 304, his yard is destroyed. Mine's nothing compared to this. What I would like to have you do is your shop or your good a block here. Come over to my house and I'll run you through everything that's going on. I'll tell you everything. It's totally, totally unacceptable. And I'm not going to put up that crap anymore. Case closed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, we're going to move on, but we are going to address all these issues one way or another. Yeah. Uh, on another one is uh, Claire Bright.
We are very, very lucky in this township to be a map as our source list. And I know none of you want to hear this. You know George was getting sued by the Peaceful Water Authority now. So I just want to let you know. You have to know Thanks, Mike. The majority of us agree with you. My name is Linda Bennett, and I live at 2030 Country Club Drive. And I'm here to talk about a life. I'm not here to talk about buildings, grounds, I'm talking about a life. Uh, recently, a friend of mine needed an ambulance, and he called. 15 minutes went by, nothing. He called Officer McCosey, and Officer McCosey tried to comfort him. Finally, 35 minutes and the ambulance arrived. Thank God this gentleman did survive. He came home from the hospital today. Now, I was here two and a half years ago, and my husband suffered a cardiac arrest. I did CPR on him for six minutes. Officer Simba arrived shortly thereafter. Officer Mercosi arrived, and then our EMS arrived, probably within the 15 minute time frame. My husband is alive now because of these people. I did not know that we don't have an EMS team in Elizabeth Township anymore. Our residents don't know that we don't have an EMS in our area now. 35 minutes, my husband would not be here. How can you put a price on a life? You can't, you can't. What can we do? How can I help to get our EMS back in our area? It's more important than buildings and roads and drainage. And I realize that's important, but how can you put a price on a life? Our EMS just finished cardiac training a week before my husband's event. Their response, five, worked on him at one time, got a pulse and he was able to be transported to McKeesport Hospital, where he flatlined again. But had it not been for them, within 15 minutes, he wouldn't have had that chance. So I'm asking you, with all the money that we have coming in, how can we get our ambulances back? How can we do this? Thank you. Thank you for Four checks sitting Abel, right there. Abel, I have a question for you. Maybe you can help answer this. Um, since you're very near the station, um, what's been the staffing lately? Uh, we had a report from Doug Pasco, I believe, a month ago that the response times were pretty good and that they were staffing that house 24 7. I can't tell you. I don't, you know, I don't really know the activity. <coughs> I don't see the truck stopping it like I used to. And I want to say something else. I can tell you that they saved my life three times. I don't think they staff it like they should. I don't think so. And that was part of the agreement when that merger took place, that they were supposed to house an ambulance here 24 7. I have the agreement where they were not living up to the agreement. I'll tell you what the problem is, they're staffing just one. We used to have two or three at a time, now we just went down to one. So yeah, there's that's the issue. Yeah. There's another problem. Yeah. And there's another problem. Wait, wait, wait. That was the biggest mistake that, that EMS ever did was to join that merger. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, their merger yeah, number one service now. They merge with Jefferson Borough. They're just a busy service. There's, they cover, I think, I want to see 80 miles of the coverage area. I mean, they're, they're no minimal crew because they used to get more work. I can't remember. Now that I ever did. You know, they should have two crews down there. There's times that they do. We get those reports. They have the response time. It has gotten better, but 
she said, we should be waiting for any kind of spring. Yeah. Well, no. Well, I'm not on it. And um, I mean, we, we contributed, I think, like 40 or 60,000 for their fuel. And, and that's part of the incentive for the, the cover us. I would rather pay the extra 40 grand a year to have two ambulances instead right. of one. Right. Right. Honestly, you know, Central right. Fire Department is willing to house an ambulance if you give us one. I guarantee it. Really? But the other problem is this, Andrew, you could, you could tell them, and I, mean, I know I, some of us who have the MS experience, you could say, hey, we want two there. And, and you know, that service starts getting busy. It doesn't matter where, whether it's Jefferson Hills, they're going to pull those ambulances. Yeah. So you can ask them whatever. Those ambulances are going, and this township's going to sit without an ambulance. That's a very well taken point. So move on to quick response vehicles that are not being. We're already being deployed. But you're still waiting for five minutes. deployed all the time for first responders. Go ahead. We're going all the time for first responders. My phone goes off nonstop. You know, yeah. Central Fire Department's going out. Uh, Elizabeth Township Number One's going out. Green Oak, Blaine Hill is going out for first responders. Our first responders have increased in the last two years as a fire department. And the problem is, in a fire department's your only only bet right now. And I'm putting yeah. hands down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You call 911. I ask for the fire department. If my family members need an ambulance, I'm asking for the fire department and the ambulance because I know that I'm going to get a rescue truck there to take care of somebody quick. So take us through the way that call would come in. Would that go to southeast and then get bumped to, to uh, Well, it goes to a call taker first okay, right. at 911, and you, you tell them obviously what the issue is going on. And then if it was me going and addressing for my family, my wife, my kids, my parents, I'm going to request that I have Central Fire Department dispatched along with our EMS. What they do is when that call taker gets the call, they put a level to that call. Right. And depending on that level of call is whether they dispatch a fire department with that or just an ambulance. The problem is too, anybody who responds to calls in this township, our windy roads are not conducive to speeds anyway. So anywhere you go, for, for Blythdale to get to Blaine Hill, it could take 10 minutes. But now you have an ambulance who a lot of times is stationed at Sheets, who may have to go to Country Club Drive, and you're automatically at a 10 to 12 minute response right there just because of the distance. And, and, and that's what they're doing typically right now is not so much putting an ambulance, they're saying it's committed to the township. It's not at the, the ambulance service, it's, it's, sitting, it's, it's sitting in the get 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 Yeah. And we've never had to complaints before. Never. We have, and I brought that up whenever that, we uh, never had those I stay out of that complaints. stuff. I stay out of most of that stuff, but that was one of the things I brought up whenever the township was talking yeah. about doing that because I've been through murders yeah. in other towns. Yeah. Yeah. So You're talking that ambulance goes so away from where we are. Right? We have to move forward and get a plan to make this yeah. better. We can't talk about what did happen. Yeah. Yeah. What we right. all have a tendency to do up here. Yeah. <laughs> so what? we have a $250,000 building, it's empty. It's not know? empty. That building's not empty down here. Uh, plus, we don't know that. Southeast region of yeah, that. That's know. also yeah, that was the dumbest right. thing. Yeah, that was. We used to have the people that were there all the time to take care of. When I had my stroke, it took them 35 minutes to get there. It never would have been that long in the past where you agree with me. Here's another, here's another question, and I, I asked this a couple times. So these Southeast regional ambulances come up and fuel here. Are those just the vehicles that are that are guaranteed to our township? Are those same the ones that are sitting over at Jefferson Hills? Yeah. Or, I mean, we're, is, yes, it's all of them. Yeah, so we're paying for the fuel for all of these ambulances that are responding all over. Well, when I talk a few dollars and cents, I'm a little bit knowledgeable about that. So if we're paying them 50 grand a year for fuel, you know what else we're paying to provide coverage for 14,000 residents? Not who saying. If we were on fee for service with those guys, we'd be a quarter of a million. Yeah. That's if we right. had our own ambulance company here staffed with full timers, we'd be a million to start it and another half a million a year to run it. Now, something I want to say, something I want to say, you know, was, um, I don't mean to interrupt you, but a piece of information that I learned, and I never knew this, but I talked to the former uh, department head of the Elizabeth Township EMS, Chris Dell. He told me that the financial situation of our EMS was so bad that we would have been bankrupt in five years. So if we, if we would have waited five years without emerging, we would have no EMS. Well, then there's something wrong because I, I belong to ambulance services still and have life members at an ambulance service that they second party their billing and they run almost without township money at all because everything you do can be billed. And so somebody was billing or someone was doing something wrong 
for, for them not well, to be able to support yeah, uh, you know you're, you're 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 absolutely right but what's happened was where those guys had their cash cow was some transports they would transport to a lot of nursing homes well those transports went out the window because now they're all on uh, uh, Medicare's reimbursement yeah, schedules. Yeah. They can't bill for a, a lot of these calls that these ambulance companies go out on. They can't bill for them. Well, and I think Elizabeth Township, what the problem was is, and we all can say this, they got so big, and then whenever they got so big and had all this equipment, they said, oh, what are we going to do now? Because now we just lost some of our ground from underneath us, and the only option to them was to merge. Was but I think that there wasn't a good game plan for us in place that said, okay, fine for you to merge, but you better guarantee us this. And now they're just taking that ambulance and using oh. it wherever they want to use it. I have a copy of the agreement, and they're not living up to the agreement. Yeah. All I can tell you is this, right now on their board, we have three really good people from this oh, council that are sitting in that board. Chris is one, my brother's one, yeah. and Chris, what's up, Chris's last name? Chris no. Dell. No. So this is as this is as good as it's going to get on that end. Oh, absolutely. Oh, actually, obviously, this has to improve. It. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and your I'm brother fine. should know. Your I'm brother's silence. This. this should never happen. Your brother's one of the best. He should know, and, and he's from this township. So <coughs> he's trying. You know, whenever, whenever this, whenever this board just started, we didn't have any influence on that board at all. And right. Since that, since that time frame, we've, we've accumulated some more seats, some really good people. So I think what we need to do, I know we do this a lot, have a sit down with them. And even if we have to commit another 40000 a year, I think that a life is worth it. You know? And if we have to commit and just say, hey, we'll give you another forty grand a year, but there's a contingency that you need two EMS ambulances in this township at all times. And if one leaves, then we're cutting up the old. We're cutting and not to belabor the point, but this is where your comprehensive plan comes in. Absolutely. Because this is where you have to start budgeting that million dollars to set this up again. Yeah. Chris, what do they? Chris, what do they run at night? How many crews do you know? I believe three crews. At night. Chris, what does Union Township and those other places pay? I'm not sure. I don't have that answer. I'll get that information. I know. Do they still have someone on uh, from Roseburg on the board that doesn't even have uh, yes. on live in any of the districts. That, that's that's the kind of stuff they have. Right. 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 That's what they're to doing. Your station for standby. Why can't we get an ambulance service in that station when there's nobody there uh, and hold their back? They're not. They're not doing that because then what the problem is is that area is going to say, well, we have to pay our EMS crew to sit in your station, and now you're going to mess up their response. So Mr. Walkie said we're paying two days of service to So we pay that neighboring ambulance service that amount to sit in our station for a couple of hours and throw their back. Hey, it may come to that. Well, I don't it's going to put that, that real, every that's station. my yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 We would love that. We would love that. We would charge us $300,000 here to do that. Now, here, here's the other thing. If, if you can't get a neighboring ambulance service in there, they suggested about a QRS vehicle, maybe we need to start paying some of the firemen for, for going to work that you're the one that the ambulance service should be doing. Maybe we have to go back to the olden days and put an ambulance back in each yeah. fire station. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> I think Chris says he'll run that committee. That's how it was. When I was talking about it, uh, one was I understand a lot of the insurance companies were paying the fees, but they were paying the patient directly. They were cashing a check, not paying the ambulance service. I don't know what the percentage was, but at one time it was sold. It was very high. Second thing. That's very common still, and that's because our state legislators won't change the darn way they do things. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly right. Okay. Second, very common. Second thing, and this is from personal experience, I've had to be transported by ambulance several times, not for you know for the emergency room, from one hospital to another, and my wife also. And I could 
think that those calls should have been made to the Woodson Township or the new EMS so they can collect the money instead of, uh, we had one from Northfield, took my wife somewhere, and then one with me, it was an hour in that day. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you why. I could just make a guess, and maybe one of you guys could make a guess because they would. I, I don't. I don't uh, know. There wasn't an availability from, from, from here to there. There were emergencies, so you know, I could have waited a half an hour for our end. Let them collect the money instead of another. Well, so again, because they've dropped these reimbursements on these kind of calls, these non-emergency calls, that they may not want them. You know, they may have to bump that to our or bump that to the North Hills for those guys to get. That's why. It's a big problem. It's a big problem throughout this whole state. But our, to answer your question, I think the one way you did address a 35 minute wait time is having two trucks instead of one. One is that not So however we go about doing that, we're with the firemen, we can pay the MS for yeah. whatever we have to do, we need two trucks. That's what it comes down to. Um, where, where, does that, where does that fellow live? What fellow that you were talking about? Um, I'm not sure of his address, but you, you would know him. It was George Lewis. So, Narragansett. Narragansett, yeah. Narragansett. So, um, very, very, very scary. Approximately, when was this call? Um, I don't know. Uh, hey, Andrew, just a suggestion to that. UPMC and also AGH, they, they offer quick response vehicles that are either housed by, uh, a dog in a box, a, a true doctor in an ambulance, or in an SUV, basically, or a paramedic. Now, I know one runs out of Forbes. I don't know where UPMC is running theirs out of. But why can't we approach them to get something here in the township? And you would have at least have a paramedic response within minutes to begin care. Yeah. And that's just a suggestion. We used that when I was in North Huntington. We had AGH. Mm -hmm. They quit doing all that for a while, and then bringing them all back again. So you're talking about having a paid, a full-time paid paramedic 24-7 yeah. township with a QR. If you could ap approach the health systems, like I said, AGH or UPMC, um, it was Medic 940 was AGH, and we housed them when I was a paramedic in North Huntington. Oh, we you want to do something this week? No. <laughs> Give them a call. And not see if they can come in. Like, I mean, if they could house it, like I said, I'm willing to bring it up at Central Fire Department. I guarantee we pass it as a membership. I would house them. And that's essential to the township so that at least they could get gather and you know get to point A and point B in the township. And you have a heart monitor, they have the drugs to start the medications, the IVs, all, all the pertinent equipment that they need is in that SUV. All they need basically is a transporting unit to get there. So they need an ambulance to get there with a first responder who can drive the ambulance, that paramedic can ride in the back and transport to the hospital. Well, and as he's saying, back in the day, sometimes we'd run an ambulance with just an EMT just to meet that medic and we'll leave right. that medic unit on scene. And they just walk up the truck and we'll pick it up later. 900, 920, yep. 960. Jeanette, man, go back. Lawn sword. Hey, we're gonna work on it. You know what I'm Thank you. Uh, we have um, two more people uh, to address tonight. We're gonna all adjourn. Uh, first is John Carlin. <laughs> I shouldn't even be saying that. I don't know if Mr. Rhodes uh, addressed this That's briefly uh, about going to litigation and that type of thing. Uh, I've been coming to this meeting for over a year now trying to get something done. Back in October, Dollar General was sent a 30 day notice that expired November 4th that they had to take action. They didn't do it. They were sent a uh, 10 day notice on the fines. The fines started, but it started then. Mid November at five hundred dollars a day. This is April. Had they been fined for what sixty, seventy thousand dollars, they would have been fined. That probably would have got their attention. We've done nothing, and I know now that we're talking about forcing the issue. So I would greatly appreciate if we do something with that. They obviously violated the codes. This is this is wrongdoing. There's you know again when I hear people that are being that are being fined for their grass being nine inches tall. I want, to, I want to jump through the roof when we have a, a, a multi-million dollar business there that blatantly violated the <coughs> business incorrectly and will not rectify the situation. It's summertime, I got a pool there. It is uh, either the code or engineers, anybody want to tell me that my yard's safe for my kid to play? That I can put 12,000 gallons of water in my pool and the hillside's not going to fall? 
because if nobody wants to tell me that it's safe, that means you think that it's not. And I don't, I don't think there's anybody to tell me that that's a safe place to be right now, right? So what do I do? They said we're gonna pull it up. They are gonna shut them down. I've well, already said this reason you know pull what happened. Just now, right. I said this has happened this evening, and there's nothing being done by May 6th to rule in. So, Excellent. Well, I, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, listen, I understand your frustration. You and I talked about yeah. it. So, in, in the event that the backyard slides into the back of Dollar General, I, I don't have a house to live in because of what they did. So it's 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 become a safety issue. You know, the kid, the kid can't play in the yard. Things fall between the fence and the, and the gaping hole. Anybody who looks over Dollar General's roof from the bridge or from Renzi Road, you can see it. It's an eyesore. It's not a. It's not a, a big secret. It's very easy to see. So, um, <coughs> here on the sixth. Yeah, that's it. That's just not done by then. It's cool falling, and that will all be up in about two days. Exactly. So, thank you. All right. Sorry, thank you. Final call, Paul. EMS is going to come up. But my wife, whenever we had our EMS here, had a real severe uh, heart problem uh, with a fit. And so the ambulance, Elizabeth Tanner, was there in 10 minutes. And I felt that they saved her by getting transported over to Jefferson at that time. So uh, hopefully we can figure out a way. I feel personally, I'll just make another comment that we should always have an ambulance here. Whether one comes in when the other one's wrong, but we should always have to have this in, in the township with the number of people that we have. Now, the other reason why and it doesn't seem as important anymore, but there is a danger because it, it, it might lead to life. But I, I have a question on the, on the Broadlawn slide. When, when that's going to be repaired, we hung up on that. It's been a long time, but that road has really been bad, and I traveled a lot. And you know, it's a dangerous situation there at Broadlawn. And I don't know whether you know when it's going to be repaired or we're we going to be shut down for a long time. I believe June. It's June. Okay. It's a county okay. project and we're going to be okay. starting the county. And I believe June is when they're. I didn't know what it was going to be like that one out in the White House on Center Street that they haven't fixed no, that for a long time. Yeah, they're pushing through because they, they don't. They yeah. Don't the only other comment that I have I travel around the road quite a bit like every day. And I don't know whether it's been noticed that as you come up Red Sea Road, I know the county at least used to be responsible for a part of Renzo Road, the lower part. Uh, we still are not they used to ash it, but now salt. And so, but when you talk out at the top, the asphalt is beginning to slide over the hill. And it keeps coming to my mind that someday it, it's gonna go. And so why can't we, or whomever is responsible, repair that before that happens and save thousands and thousands of dollars well, State Road or not, we should put some pressure on the state then to get that. Because what's going to happen, it's going to slide. It's it's working up to when we get the heavy rains coming up in the spring, it may really go. And then we're, you know, either one lane or or maybe block off. And so why not save money and fix it up? Street down. Back in the bus, 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 back in the bus